Hello friends, welcome to GYAS. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC Civil Services and for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So currently, we have 10, 10 series that focus on your prelims and one series that focus on your mains. So what we do in these prelims oriented series, we daily pick up two topics and daily we discuss 10 to 15 questions of, the, uh, of one, one topic and in this manner, daily 20 to 30 topic, uh, MCQ of, of two topics are covered and uh, in this manner you can see that uh, the, the total questions that are covered daily are 20 to 30 so we are covering the 10 topics so we have allotted a particular day to each topic so we uh, for example for if we are covering today science and technology and, and geography then tomorrow we will dis uh, discuss ancient Indian medieval India and so on so we have decided to cover 10 topics and we will do so till 31st May so the why the date chosen has been 31st May because on uh, uh, on 2nd June is your prelims of UPSC CSC 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your exam so friends uh, uh, let's see what is the, what are the questions of today so in this lecture we will be covering the science and technology and uh, the, the, this is lecture number two we have already covered the first lecture of this science and technology part so the first question is power of a spherical lens is mainly dependent upon its one length second width third focal length fourth clarity so select the correct answer using the codes below so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that the answer is c that is third only because this power of a spherical lens is mainly dependent upon the focal length so it doesn't depend depend on length width and clarity so so it is basically inverse of the focal length and the unit of power is diopter and uh, if uh, so the, the answer is c that is uh, solution is C. So two lenses having same focal length will have same power. So basically, uh, this this is uh, basically power is the converging power of 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 the lens. It is the ability to converge uh, to converge uh, the rays falling on it. So it is basically reciprocal of the focal length in meters, and its unit that is the unit of power is diopter. So one diopter is the power of a lens whose focal length is one meter. So let's move on to the second question. The second question is consider the following statements. Assertion is the apparent position of star on Earth is slightly different from its actual position, and the reason is the straight on and the starlight on entering the Earth's atmosphere undergoes refraction continuously before it reaches it reaches the Earth. So we have to choose uh, that whether there is this assertion and reason are true, and whether a whether R is the correct explanation of A. So let me tell you, friends, that yes, the apparent position of the star is slightly different from its actual position, and why it happens because Earth's atmosphere compo is composed of numerous layers. So when the, the light passes through these layers it undergoes it undergoes refraction so due, due to this refraction the path of of, of the visible path of the, uh, the the light that comes to your eyes you see it from coming from a particular source but but that source is up, up, it, 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 it is uh, it is like the position of actual position is slightly different because uh, while undergoing refraction in the earth uh, uh, in the earth's atmosphere uh, this light this light from the source uh, uh, bends towards the normal so obviously when it bends towards the more normal then 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 the, then you will you will see the star, uh, star slightly above its actual position so the answer is assertion is correct and R is correct and a is an appropriate explanation of a so so a, R is an appropriate explanation of a so solution is a so the here is the explanation so atmospheric refraction causes this uh, this this uh, the, the, this uh, uh, path of light to to bend and uh, this this results in slightly different position. So, so star actually appears slightly above the uh, than the actual position when viewed near the horizon. So this is about your uh, uh, second question. So let's move on to the third question. The third question is consider the following statements. Assertion is viruses found in food cannot infect humans. Reason is unlike bacteria, viruses cannot multiply in foods. So friends, we have to choose the correct. Uh, uh, a correct answer so let me tell you friends that viruses uh, found in food uh, this statement that it cannot infect humans in actual practice the practice this is wrong because the viruses that are found in food food when this food is ingested by the human beings that then these viruses can can enter the human body and then can, they they can use the host body to multiply so uh, a is incorrect but let me tell you friends they these uh, viruses uh, uh, unlike bacteria, they cannot multiply in food. So this state, uh, reason uh, R is correct, but not A is correct. So the answer would be A is correct, but 
uh, a is incorrect but r is correct so the answer would be d so actually viruses uh, they multiply only on in the in the host so for example in human beings so they they only uh, kind of divide themselves they multiply themselves inside living cells of other organisms so food is not living cell or, or, or living matter so for that purpose the viruses do not divide themselves in on, on food when they are on food they do not them divide themselves but once that food is consumed by the human bo uh, human being then these viruses can infect the uh, can infect the uh, human body so they can they can use human body to uh, to multiply so this is about your third question so let's move on to the fourth question fourth question is which of the following is our benefits of probiotics first they increase the ph of the stomach making digestion easier second they make diarrheal diseases milder third they kill major bacterial strains in human gut improving bowel movement select the correct answer uh, using the quotes below so let me tell you friends uh, that the answer is second only that is C they make diarrheal diseases milder so let me tell you friends that actually the, these probiotics they release acid so they are acidic in nature so in, in fact they decrease the pH and not increase the pH and uh, and this this bacterial strains are not killed by them so the statement is also wrong so the answer is C that is second only so here is the justification so improves it improves immunity and hence prevent or make diarrheal diseases milder and also decreases the risk of colon cancer and decreases the cholesterol absorption and also produce acids that decrease the pH in the gut and thus increase the absorption of minerals such as calcium and phosphorus so basically when the pH decreases in the gut so it becomes acidic so in this that per, that makes the absorption of minerals like calcium and phosphorus easy so let's move on to the fifth question the fifth question is which of the following human body fluids is the most acidic in nature a blood b gastric juice c saliva d tea Years. let me tell you friends that uh, the most uh, uh, this acidic uh, fluid in human body is the gastric juice that is released in stomach to 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 digest food so basically the answer is B so here I have included a kind of pick of uh, this uh, table so you can see that sulfuric acid is highly acidic and then comes the stomach acid that is hydrochlor hydrochloric acid SCL that is found in stomach so then comes lemon juice then vinegar this carbonated be beverages they come between lemon juice and vinegar then tomatoes acid drink and then this coffee pure in freshly distilled water sea water and these are the further these bloods let, let me tell you friends the blood and tears are slightly basic in nature because at 7 uh, the, the the solution is considered neither basic neither ni uh, nor nor it is considered acidic so these this this blood and tears actually they are slightly basic so the uh, so the answer of this is a that is stomach acid is the most acidic part of our body fluid uh, sixth question is uh, the practice of vegetable propagation is beneficial because uh, first it can help propagate even those plants that have lost the capacity to produce seeds second plants produced under the practice bear no genetic resemblance to the parent plant thus promoting biodiversity so friends we have to choose the correct uh, statement from the above statement so let me tell you friends that the first is the correct uh, statement it can help propagate even those plants that have lost the capacity to produce seeds for example uh, this vegetative propagation helps in the in the in the in the, in the production of uh, bananas which do not have their seeds so also let me tell you that second statement is wrong because they the uh, this the, the plants observed from the vegetative propagation they are in actual practice they bear a close resemblance genetic resemblance to the parent material the uh, parent plant so the answer is one only so the solution would be a so here is the justification as I have told you this property of vegetative propagation is used in methods such as layering and grafting so please do ensure and keep in mind uh, keep in your mind that layering and grafting is is the kind of uh, vegetative propagation and uh, this uh, this the uh, this uh, plants raised by vegetative vegetative propagation can also bear fruits uh, and flowers more earlier than the than produced from seeds so this is about your uh, explanation part and also this vegetative propagation in case in in this the the, the produced plant is genetically similar to the parent plant and uh, let's move on to the seventh question the th seventh question is litmus solution is a purple dye litmus solution is a purple dye which is extracted from x x is a plant belonging to the division thallophyta and is commonly used as an indicator x here here refers to a lichens b mosses c uh, shell d ro ro rosa so let me tell you friends that here the answer is a that is lichen so basically the dye that uh, that is observed from lichens that or that for that matter lichens is is 
is purple in color so it it, it, it changes its color into blue uh, or red depending upon the, the upon the acidic or basic nature of the solution so if it is acidic then the, then the purple dye will will turn turn red and in case if it is basic then it will it will turn into blue color so solution is a so lichens here or lichens so they this this is uh, this it, uh, this like a litmus solution is neither acidic nor basic its color is purple so there are also various other materials like red cabbage leaves turmeric colored petals of some flowers such as hydrangea and petunia and geranium so the, which, which indicate the presence of acid or base in a solution so please keep them in mind red cabbage leaves uh, turmeric colored petals of some flowers such as uh, hydrangea petunia and then geranium uh, ger geranium so let's move on to the eighth question the eighth question is the sky appears dark to passengers flying at high altitudes uh, are is reason is light scattering is not prominent at such height so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that yes uh, the, the the planes that uh, that's uh, that fly very high in the screen uh, sorry uh, sky they 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 uh, to them the the uh, the passengers sitting in that uh, the, these planes uh, will will uh, this plane will see the sky as dark because at such height scattering does not take place so a is correct and r is an appropriate explanation explanation of a so answer is a so basically the blue color that you see is actually due to the scattering of uh, light so when when the light sunlight enters uh, the atmosphere earth has very minute particles in it that can that can uh, they, they are so minute that they can they can can uh, they can scatter uh, the 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 light that is that is that has shorter wavelength so they are uh, they are kind of uh, the, the, to this the the uh, blue color is more likely to be scattered and red is um, least likely to be scattered because red light has uh, red light has red color has the highest wavelength so that's why uh, this blue gets easily scattered and it, uh, it the sky appears to your eyes as blue so basically the blue sky is due to scattering of light and and in fact the at such heights at high altitude scattering does not play, take place and and the sky appears dark so in fact if the if uh, the, uh, if earth wouldn't have the had the had the in case uh, the, this atmosphere then the, uh, the then the sky would have been uh, kind of uh, a black in color so let's move on to the ninth question the ninth question is what are the general applications of carbon nanotubes first they can be used to reinforce graphite in tennis rackets second their structure allows them to be used as a container for transporting a drug in the body third is they are used as semiconductors in the electric circuits so we have to tell that what is the general application of carbon nanotubes so friends let me tell you that its properties are so uh, well that they, they it can be used in all of these purposes so the answer is d so here is explanation they are basically cylindrical uh, fuller nest so basically they 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 include highly they their properties include highly tensile strength high high electrical conductivity high uh, high uh, ductility high heat conductivity and relative chemical and activity chemical inactivity so let's move on to the 10th question the 10th question is autotrophic nutrition is common in a plant plants fungi and protozoa b bacteria virus and protozoa c plants and blue green algae d virus and fungi so let me tell you friends that autotrophic nutrition is a way of nutrition in which the living organism uh, kind of uh, prepares its own food so it is not dependent upon the other organism for its food so let me tell you that uh, the, the correct answer is plants and blue green algae blue green algae are also known as cyanobacteria so the, these plants and blue green algae have the capability to produce their own food so the, through the process of photosynthesis so this is called autotrophic nutrition so the solution is c so here is the explanation as I have provided you that uh, autotrophic nutrition is basically prevalent in organisms that can produce their own food and can do the process of photosynthesis so next comes the 11th question consider the following statements about the adult tinkering labs first these labs are established the cross schools in India with the vision to cultivate 1 million children in India as neo neoteric innovators second these la labs are established under the scheme adult innovation mission third adult innovation mission will grant will provide grant in aid that includes a one-time establishment cost of rupees 10 lakh and operational expenses of rupees 10 lakh for a maximum period of five years to each adult tinkering lab so which of the following uh, above statements is correct so let me tell you friends that all of these statements are correct yes these adult tinkering labs are established under the adult innovation mission which is a kind of flagship program of government of india to 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 promote uh, pr to promote innovation and to oversee kind to to act as an umbrella organization to 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 oversee the uh, uh, innovative innovation ecosystem in india and to rejuvenate it so this basically under 
metal tinkering lab uh, the the money is monetary assistance is also provided and uh, and to in, it is provided in two in two forms that is one time establishment post of rupees 10 lakh and then 10 lakh further uh, over the next uh, or the, over the next five years uh, by by giving two lakh per year so the all the statements are correct so the answer would be b that is one two and three only so the solution is b so eligibility is basically the school must be the must have the minimum grade from sixth through tenth and it must be managed by government or local body or private trust or society that can set up adult tinkering lab so significance is that it would obviously if adult tinkering labs are established there 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 the uh, the the kind of pra uh, practicals will be done there so the, this lab 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 practical practicals will be done so obviously students become inclusive uh, inclusive uh, so, so so their curiosity level increases so for that purpose when within this creative curiosity increases then ultimately also the innovation level as well as the creativity of students increases and uh, they become more more innovative so it is basically to the purpose is to our fertile lingering labs is to create 1 million uh, children that that are innovative to make 1 million children so need for such labs is that uh, that uh, that we are grappling with ma many issues many 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 environment related issues and many other issues and also we are grappling with new technologies so they we must also have the skills to, uh, skill skill in the in the individuals that 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 can manage these these technologies so obviously these adult tinkering labs are necessary because uh, these the skill the skill manpower in emerging technologies will be will be the will be will be the will be in great demand in coming future so that's why these have been set up to inculcate a scientific temper and to promote an entrepreneurial spirit among the children so let's uh, next comes the 12th question the 12th question is consider the following about the experimental advanced superconducting token reactor east reactor first it is developed by japan second it is a type of artificial sun sun designed to replicate processes that take place in sun to produce energy so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that only second is correct first is not correct it is not developed by japan but in reality it is developed by the china so first is incorrect only second is correct that is b is correct so the solution is b so east it is a basically a, this experimental advanced superconducting tokamak is a kind of artificial sun in which basically this uh, uh, heavy and uh, super heavy uh, isotopes of hydrogen that is deuterium and tritium are kind of pl uh, are, are placed and then electric current is passed and they are forced to split and electron splits and they are converted into hydrogen ions and they then there are there is magnet magnet that is uh, that is th that is in this uh, this uh, the container that contains these uh, uh, isotopes and then these uh, these uh, this this magnet attracts the hydrogen ions to a particular place and with their where, where they these these ions feel fu fused together so this fusion uh, leads to release of huge amount of energy that can be used to run a power plant or to produce electricity so uh, the this this is basically the china's uh, innovation so uh, recently it has kind of reached the maximum temperature that is of 100 uh, Fahrenheit million Fahrenheit so let's move on to the third Thirteenth question. The thirteenth question is consider the following statements. First, recently a memorandum. So it is the last question of friends today's lecture. First is recently a memorandum memorandum of understanding uh, between uh, uh, Atal Innovation Mission India and Fund Talent and Success Russia was signed. Second, the purpose of the MOU is to promote science and technology strong foundation to the collaborative work through exchange of students, teachers, researchers, and scientists between both countries. Third, Atal Innovation Mission is mandated to create an umbrella structure to oversee. The the innovation ecosystem of the country and revolutionizing the same so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is is a that is one two and three so all these statements are correct in fact a memorandum of understanding was signed between the india india in india uh, in Atal innovation india mission india and fund talent and success russia so to promote science to promote the kind of research in science and technology and to promote collaborative work to in through 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 exchange of students teachers and researchers and scientists from both the sides so the correct answer is one two and three so the solution is a so here is the learning so as i have already told you that it is basically to establish relationships and collaboration Collaborations. So the purpose is to create new scientific knowledge, generate intellectual property, innovations, product development in both countries. So about Atal Innovation Mission is that Atal Innovation Mission is a flagship program uh, under which this this uh, uh, this memorandum of understanding understanding was was signed. And as I have told you earlier, the Atal Innovation Mission the, the purpose of this innovation mission is to 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 kind of uh, uh, oversee the uh, innovation ecosystem and to revolutionize 
it so that it can it can be conducive to the to the to the to the to the upcoming uh, challenges that India could face. So this is all about friends today's video. If you like the questions, if you like the video, then please do share it with your friends. Please ensure that you like this video and also friends, please ensure that you subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications relating to UPSC CAC 2019. And lastly, friends, if you want to subscribe to the PDFs of these MCQs, then you can contact us at this number that is achieveies21 at the rate gmail.com and the contact number is 89684264851. So friends, in case you want to join for the PDFs of these, you want to get the PDFs of these lectures, then you can contact us at this number. Obviously, there will be certain costs uh, that we will be charging you people for the PDFs because as we are putting in a lot of effort, so certainly there will be a charge for these PDFs. So if you want to wish to subscribe to them, you can contact us at this number or email ID. So why these PDFs are important, friends? Because at the end of the day, you will not be able to see 25 to 30 minute long videos or for that matter, you will not be able to read standard books or NCRTs because at that time, you will have multiple topics to revise and you can't just rely on videos as well as for that matter on standard books because standard books or for that matter, NCRTs are, are read when you have time. When you have, don't have the time, when you have to do revision, you must have some kind of notes to do revision. So these PDFs are designed in a manner so that you can revise your important concepts and basic basic concepts again and again because explanation detailed explanation is given and in by the way of which you can read about a particular topic again and again so in this manner this 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 is what uh, the UPSC demands the revision is must then only you will be able to recall in the exam hall and this revision uh, to make it interesting this question answer format is quite helpful so if you wish to subscribe to them you can contact us at these these this number or at this email ID so this is all about today's lecture friends thank you have a nice day